Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to make a really quick kind of video to show you folks what I have in the works for the next video. So this is gonna be a two part series, I guess. But I wanted to make a kind of of a solar setup, another one, but a very, very simple setup and do kind of of a runtime test and have 200 watts of solar input and a 100 amp hour battery and run one of my really large 12 volt coolers off of it to kind of give you folks an idea of what you can anticipate to get off of a standard 100 amp hour battery. But let me show you kind of what I'm going to be using and then I'm going to show you at the end of this video the actual setup of it outside and then part two is going to be the actual week-long test of all this stuff. So to start off, I've got the two lead time battery 100 watt solar panels and these are, oops, and these are so light I'm going to hang them from my pergola outside, but they're crazy, crazy thin which I do like, so um, shouldn't be too hard to mount these somewhere out in the backyard. But I'm gonna be using two of those panels. I'm gonna be using their 30 amp MPPT Bluetooth enabled charge controller. So, so this will really help me kind of understand how much solar I'm actually getting from those two panels being put into the battery. But I'm gonna be using the 2000 watt lead time inverter, pure sign inverter to power my cooler via AC instead of DC, just because I kind of want to see again how long it's going to, how long it's going to take or how long, you know, that, that cooler will run off of this inverter and that battery. But just your standard pure sign inverter, nothing really special there. And then I've already done a review on this lead time mini battery, which is absolutely a phenomenal battery. And I just saw a video from the expert himself, Will Prouse, who did a review video actually on this one, the trolling motor lead time battery, 100 amp hour. And if you didn't believe my review, go watch the expert because he actually tore it down and he was pretty impressed with it. So it makes me feel good about my review because I did like this battery, but, but it, you know, he actually recommend buying it and a lot of people really value his opinion and I was pleasantly pleased, I guess, that he also appreciated this battery. So lead time is putting out some good quality stuff. Um, I think the solar panels and the inverter and the charge controller are pretty new items for them. So I'm gonna use all of their stuff to run this test, but enough of that. I'm gonna get all of this kind of wired up and set up outside and I'm gonna show you my big 70 quart cooler that takes around 150 watts to cycle that compressor. It is a very large cooler, so it is about the same wattage as my chest freezer uses out in my garage. So that's why I'm picking the large cooler, not, not one of these little small 12 volt coolers because I could probably run it for a week without solar panels at all. But I'm gonna be using the big one that, that, that again takes around 150 watts. But anyway, rambling on. I'm gonna get this stuff set up and take it outside and kind of show you folks the setup and then part two, Again, I'm gonna to try to do around a five day, depending on runtime, test to see how long this stuff can support my 12 volt cooler. Well folks, here's the setup that we're gonna be using for this test. And I just wanna walk you through how actually easy these solar station setups are to make. Don't get all freaked out about the wiring and stuff because literally anyone can do it. Now this is the basic bare bones setup but it's gonna get the job done if all you have is one little battery, maybe a small solar panel, just the bare basic stuff. But let me walk you through how this is all wired first. So coming around here to the front, I've got my two 100 watt solar panels just laid, laid out right here. Now I have these connected in series and that is because I'm gonna basically get full sun on these panels. And I also don't have any branch connectors on hand, but if these were gonna be in a shaded condition, parallel connection is the best because those operate into, because the solar panels operate independently of each other in parallel connection. In serious connection, if you have a little bit of shade on one panel, it kind of brings the whole system down. But anyway, they're, they're wired up in series. So, so to connect these panels in series, I took one of the hardwired MC4 connectors from one panel and I took the other one from the other panel and I connected one negative and one positive. That leaves me one negative and one positive open that I then plugged in my extension MC4 cable connection to, which is kind of all wound up right here. But it ends up coming back behind here and you don't have to have this, but I do have a little watt meter installed, but that extension cable goes directly into the MPPT charge controller 
where it has a little solar icon. That's it. And then over here is your battery input. So I've got a couple of leads going all the way down to my battery down here. If you can see, way down there. And then my inverter, I've got, of course, the positive and negative leads also going down to the positive and negative on the battery. And that is it in a nutshell. So that is literally all that you need to get started with some type of solar setup, solar generator. If you just have just these basic components, you need to buy a couple of wires, maybe some, some terminal rings, that's about it. Now you could put some fuses in line on some of these connections in here, but this is such low wattage, low voltage stuff. I'm really honestly not that worried about it. The battery BMS is gonna take care of anything that might happen, but what I might end up doing, and I haven't decided yet, is take these solar panels that are on the ground and actually kind of hang them up here for my pergola. But we don't get that much sun back here. We only get it down here on the ground. So I don't know how the testing's gonna go, but I just wanted to show you folks how simple it is to actually set one of these things up. They're not complicated. They're not scary at all. For part two of the video, I'm gonna get again my big 70 quart cooler. I'm gonna stick it out here in the 110 degree summer heat we're still having down here in Texas. And I'm gonna run this little battery off of AC, off of the inverter, not the DC, but we're gonna be using AC power to run that cooler. And we're gonna see how long we can get that cooler to actually run just off of this setup right here. So stay tuned for video number two and we'll see how long this stuff works. Thanks for watching.